Welcome back to Pop Reads from the Book of Corolla. Last week we talked about entertainment and how crappy a lot of it is, and that most people can't tell the difference between what's commercialized and forced upon you to what's actually good. This time we get to talk about mother effing nature. Let's begin. I'm fascinated by nature because it's got a lot of range. On the one hand, it seems boring. It's got a lot of browns and oranges and colors from furniture in the 70s. And then once in a while, you'll see some multicolored fish from an exotic local and think, holy shit. How did nature come up with that one? Sometimes nature's so straight, Republican and uptight, and other times it's like the gayest guy ever. The peacock, come on. That's a gay pride parade on two legs. The word peacock even sounds gay. It's not just animals. Think about the range pumpkins have. There's the mini pumpkin you put out for the table centerpiece on Thanksgiving. That's the size of an apple, and then there are the ones that collapse the suspension of the farmer's truck they're sitting in. The ones you see at uh, country fairs, there are big humans and small humans, but the smallest go 60 pounds and the biggest go 600. With pumpkins, it's 7 ounces versus 1,700 pounds. And they look exactly the same. And we have a lot of range in our reactions to nature, and it doesn't necessarily follow logic. Take our feelings about bats. All bats do is eat grasshoppers and, mosquito and s mosquitoes and sleep in Balfry. Yet, we're completely freaked out by them. Even Hollywood can't decide how to feel about the bat. Think about Count Dracula and Batman. No other animal has had the kind of cinematic range. There's no manatee that either saves a city or comes in at midnight through the French doors and rapes an <laughs> ingenue <laughs> or bugs. We've decided there are good bugs and bad bugs. For some reason, we hate cockroaches, but what did a cockroach ever do to anyone? Bugs really tell you a lot about human nature. If you live in the United States, unless you're one of the four people ever to be killed by a black widow spider, bugs should be neither here nor there. Yet we spend a lot of time thinking about them, talking about them and figuring out ways to get rid of them. I mean, they're almost a metaphor for how our psych works. They're small, mean us no harm, and pose no discernible threat. Yet if we know there's one in the bedroom, with us, we can't go to sleep. Also, we don't really define bugs along the lines of whether they're dangerous or not. We define them aesthetically. What's the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Except one is gray and one looks like a gay flag. Spiders. I love the idiots who say you should be happy to have spiders in your house because they take care of the bad bugs. That's like saying I like to keep a, <laughs> a crip around the house. It keeps the bloods out. <laughs> Also, when's the last time you walked into a kitchen in the middle of the night and saw a spider locked in Mortal Kombat with a silver fish? I used to put them outside, but then they used, <laughs> they would just go out, F, get pregnant, and come back in. There's no reason they're inside. They're not lost. They came inside for the same reason you came inside. It's warm and there's food. There's nothing that makes you look stupider than walking into a spider web when you step out of the house and get one in the face. Your neighbors think you're having a seizure because they don't see what you hit. They just see a crazed maniac throwing punches in the air and it comes out of the spider's ass. If it came from the seagulls, you'd have to take a shower. Dung beetles. This is a bad draw in the animal kingdom. This is your whole life. You roll around a pile of shit until a hawk eats you, which is a sweet relief. The dung beetle would be one of those insects other insects couldn't complain in front of, like when you tell a guy how miserable you were in Boy Scout camp and he tells you he did three tours in Nam. A pill bug couldn't be like, oh man, I have, a, I have to live under a rock, or a moth couldn't go, god damn, every time someone turns on a porch light, I have to go flying at it, because a dung beetle would be like, cry me a river. I have to roll around in a ball of elephant shit, that's three times my height. Could you imagine how low the self-esteem of a dung beetle must be? If I get a zit, I won't even leave the house. This is worse than syphilis. Sis, sis, Sisyphus. <laughs> at least the what? At least he was pushing granite and not rhino flop. Alligators. Every time I turn on, wow, that was a hard word for me to pronounce there, huh? I guess I should work on my uh, vocabulary. Alligators. Every time I turn on the TV, there's some jack-off in khaki shorts diving off a boat onto an alligator and wrestling one at amusement park in Florida. 
This has to be really confusing for the alligators. Five million years of people being scared shitless of you, but in the last five years, every asshole with a fan boat and a roll of duct tape is jumping on your back. I'd love to fly on, be a fly on the wall at the next alligator convention. What the F? I used to just slide up on the shore, yawn, and scare the bejesus out of the natives with the hun in the hundred miles. Now every Yahoo with a video camera and a Red Bull wants to throw down. What the hell? Does anyone know what the F's going on? Why aren't these damn fools scared of us anymore? One of your guys in Florida is going to have to eat a toddler. Get these assholes back in line. I bet when Steve Irwin died, they were pissed that a stingray got him. It should have been one of us, man. Fish. I love the hypocrisy of people who, for moral reasons, won't eat beef or poultry. But when you press them on it, they admit they eat fish. To me, a swordfish is much more majestic than a chicken or a cow. And the way you catch and kill them is usually less humane than a cow gets. A cow will get a bolt to the head quick and easy. A swordfish gets a hook through the mouth. It's dragged out of the water and essentially drowns on the deck of the boat while guys with beards hit it with those weird small boat bats. If it's lucky, it gets its head cut off first. Either way, it's alive and now it's dead and someone served it up to you with a side of mashed potatoes. So what's the difference? Get a steak, you pussy. Recently, I was thinking about fishing and I realized why I don't like it. It's because you use little fish for bait. Fish are essentially cannibals. They eat smaller versions of themselves. This would be like me saying, I'm hungry, somebody get me a midget. <laughs> dolphins. It's too bad dolphins can't get laid by humans. There isn't a hot chick alive who doesn't love dolphins. Dolphins are the only thing that live in the sea that, <laughs> that women would actually have sex with. If there are any single guys reading this and you're trying to get laid when you're on your first date with it and she asks you what do you do for a living say i work with special needs dolphins they are the only <laughs> they are the only creatures that live in the ocean that make us brag they are smarter than us you know if you ever if you're ever out and there are sharks around they'll ward them off they're family oriented and highly intelligent they're very curious and we love that it's funny because when dolphins or otters or something that's that that is cute or curious, it's adorable. When it's rats, roaches, or fat chicks, we want to put them down, definitely. Should have worn my no fat chick shirt. Whales, every year or so, a whale gets lost and ends up in the river or a bay, and the news covers it 24 seven. Why is it that whales used to be lantern oil, but now if one goes astray, the whole world shuts down? And when a whale tries to beach itself, we all go ape shit. big whoop, it decided for some reason, it does not want to continue to live. Can't we respect that? Imagine if one day you were just too tired to go on living, but a bunch of guys in bandanas and Birkenstocks dragged you out of your house and forced you to get a job and start dating. Why can't we just let whales kill themselves? Why do we have to have whale interventions? You have to watch. <laughs> you have too much to live for, buddy. There is so much krill left to eat. Think about your pod. Beavers. I don't think it's cool that beavers live in lodges. Gophers live in holes. Beavers live in lodges. It sounds as if they're in the they're smoking their peace pipes, watching sports, and bitching about their beaver wives. Dogs. I have a sad relationship with dogs. I wanted one my entire life. All I wanted was a German Shepherd, but my cheap parents didn't even want to feed me. Never mind a dog. And maybe they were too liberal. German Shepherds are the most racist dogs. Watch one episode of Cops with the canine unit and you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> my parents were divorced and my dad was living in an apartment. I bugged him and bugged him and bugged him. He said one day when we moved to a house, he would get me a German Shepherd. My father never made promises he didn't keep. Not because he was a man of honor, but because he never made a promise. <laughs> we moved into a house in North Hollywood that cost my father $15,000. Now, to be fair, those were $1,975, but still, the average house was going between sixty-five and 85000 so you can only imagine what that piece of shit looked like. I woke up every morning and ran downstairs. Actually, it was one story, but I'd go into the living room and the indoor-outdoor carpet, praying to see a German Shepherd every morning with a bow on it. The dog never showed up. Eventually... My dad remarried and moved into a house with one and a half bathrooms and I let go of the dream of ever getting a German Shepherd puppy. 
20 years later, when I was living in my first house in the shadow of the Hollywood sign working on Love Line and The Man Show and making a good living, I thought, whatever happened to that German Shepherd puppy I wanted so many years ago? I decided to go out and rescue one by giving $600 to a bull dyke in Arletta who ran a puppy mill. I named her Lotzi, and <laughs> my beloved Hungarian stepfather who died a few months earlier. And the love affair began. She was beautiful and rambunctious and had one ear that wouldn't stay up. When she turned six months old, I dropped her off at the vet to be spayed. Was due to pick her up that afternoon and got a call from the vet saying that she was dead. Some sort of liver problem. I never got to the bottom of it. I was now in my early 30s. I had one dog in my life for a total of two months. It's a sad tale, but I tell it in case there are any kids reading this book. The message is, never follow a dream. After Lotzi died, I swore I'd never love again. Unfortunately, my wife, I expanded that proclamation outside of the canine realm. Almost ten years later, after moving into another house, a package showed up at the door. It was a car covered. I ordered online, but just behind it was a blonde lab named Molly. She was shipped out from Chicago. A combination of neglect from my wife's niece and nephews and their mom getting new furniture meant a one-way ticket to Hollywood for Molly. <laughs> for Molly girl. We immediately bonded and a love affair soon began. Sweet, energetic, loves to play. My wife, whose biological clock was ticking so loudly that it was more of a telltale heart than a clock, poured all her maternal energy into Molly as well. One summer about five years ago, after a particularly rousing episode of Oprah, she walked into the den and announced, we've got to get Molly rattlesnake training. I said, for what? She said, we're in rattlesnake country and it's summertime. I pointed out, we're also in earthquake country and this is earthquake weather. Should we also be training her to work one of those wind-up flashlight radios? She replied, there are rattlesnakes all over these hills. If one bites good enough to take down a horse, that's plenty good to take down Molly girl. I said I would be goddamned if I was going to pay some guy in the desert <laughs> boots with his ponytail pulled through the back of his cap to come over and here and shake rubber snake in front of my dog. She came back one more time with a, what about Molly girl? And I gave her the speech. She's probably memori <laughs> memorized like the Pledge of Allegiance by now. Just because we live in Hollywood doesn't mean we're going Hollywood. All that nonsense is for paranoid wit whitey who's got too much money, too much time on his hands. We don't need to buy into Oprah's scare of the month club. I put my foot down into a pile of Molly's shit. And that was it. Two days later, we were sitting in the den watching Entertainment Tonight when Molly came into the room and plopped down in front of the TV set. She seemed lethargic. Even though it was dark and the room was only illuminated by the television set, my wife noticed some swelling on the left side of Molly's snout. You probably know where this is going. Then she noticed two bloody red dots about an inch apart on her nose. It didn't take that guy who was eaten by grizzly bears to know there was puncture wounds. She had been struck by a rattlesnake. Lynette immediately sprang into action by screaming at, at me. Then she jumped up and grabbed Molly, obscuring my view of the shirtless Matthew McConaughey ski, uh, sea kayaking. She yelled, I told you, this is your fault. You threw Molly into the car and sped off into the night. Four thousand dollars and zero... Blowjobs later, Molly was saved. Once again, she cheated death. She's known around the neighborhood as the Osama Bin Laden of Blonde Labs. The vet explained that if it had happened during the morning or afternoon when we weren't home, Molly would have just curled up in a ball and died. This didn't help my case, and between the anti-venom serums and multi-trips to the vet for follow-up, the guy with the magnetic sign on the Vanagon that said Snake Whisperer would have been a real money saver. I love Molly, but I do have a complaint. She sleeps everywhere except in the $200 bed we bought for her. I would love this ability. I'm envious. It usually takes a good 15 beers before I can fall asleep on the bathroom floor. <laughs> She'll sleep on the cold tile floor right next to a super expensive suede bed line with the Gora and the stuff and the camel hair. I assume she does it to mock me, I'll say. Why don't you sleep in your bed, Molly? And she'll look up at me, nah, I'm good here, on your sweatpants. I end up getting angry, get in the bed, we paid for it, it's too small for the kids. Listen, you damn dog, you're going to be comfortable if I have to use my boot to mash you into the bed. If Molly had balls, she'd just rest them on the edge of the bed to F with me. 
Why not sleep in the comfortable thing that's built for you? I've never gone to a hotel, seen the bed, and thought, hey, look at that. Goose down comforter, California King mattress. Wow, bless you. California King mattress, soft pillows. Okay, I'm going to go sack out next to the toilet. I like a big dog, but then there are the people who are into Great Danes. It's a golden retriever, not big enough for you. Who needs a dog the size of a donkey? I'm not going to hook it up to a plow. I need companionship, not something to pull my car out of a ditch. I don't want a dog that's so big that if it decides to have sex with me, there's nothing I can do about it. And if a week of dog's fecal matter weighs more than you, you shouldn't be allowed to own it. Cats. Well, we're on the fecal tangent. Let's not forget about cats. People especially. Guys don't like cats. But let's give credit where credit is due. Cats bury their own crap. The cat will be quiet. <laughs> With quiet dignity, lets himself out of the home, goes into the yard, drops a deuce, and then covers his tracks. If I were a publicist for cats, that's all I'd scream, be screaming about. Humans are so horribly insecure. If the pet doesn't run up to us when we get home and literally start kissing our ass like a dog, even if it just wants to get food from us, we can't handle it. We're like, I don't like her. Why isn't she worshipping me? Pets aren't here to make you feel better about yourself and your shitty life. That's what drugs are for. But cats bury their dog. Duke, does anything say, I love you better than, let's give them their props. Squirrels, I've seen 200 million squirrels in my life, but I've never seen one take a shit. I walk my dog and she shits every nine feet. I'll share my thoughts on bird shit shortly, but I don't even know what squirrel shit looks like. There are so many squirrels running around the trees on my property as birds. Shouldn't I come out to my car mo one morning and say, damn, I just had a detail and now it's covered in squirrel shit. Birds, okay? One last shit-related thought. I hate birds because they hate us. It's clear they hate us because there's more crap on cars than there is on the ground. To me, this is evidence that they're, <laughs> they're aiming. They're acting with malicious intent. These constantly bird... These constantly bird shit... They, wow, there's constantly bird shit all over my car. I can't even read and miss the S. And if you own a restaurant by the ocean, you might as well just paint your roof white. They should just call those restaurant bird shit by the sea. I love when the plastic owl that they put on the roof to scare off the seagulls is covered in bird shit. <laughs> the seagull is saying, hey, tough guy, I'm on your ruse. Hold on, I ate Mexican last night. <laughs> Let's be honest, if you could fly, you'd shit on things too. It'd be like, hey, there's a mayor's motorcade, or my ex-girlfriend is walking in the park with her new man. It's about time for an aerial deuce dropping. Imagine the damage you could do if birds were as big as medium-sized dogs. We'd all be dead. Let's talk about Pegasus for a moment. I know mythical flying horses don't really exist, but it's an animal after all. Have you ever seen a pile of horse shit? Imagine that coming down on you from 2,000 feet. I have this fantasy of getting a Pegasus and flying it over the cars and homes of my enemies. I'd spend a week feeding it lunch truck breakfast burritos and Dodger dogs. <laughs> then I'd steer it toward my neighbor's house, the one who called the cops about the noise from the place at 9 on New Year's Eve and drop a bunker buster. When, that, when he came over the next day to complain, hey man, your Pegasus shit a hole in my roof, I'd be like, wasn't my Pegasus. Pandas. Pandas hate us. All we want them to do is mate and they won't. They are the only species on the planet that refuse to screw. Every other species loves screwing so much it becomes a problem. We have to spay and neuter dogs, thin and deer population, thin the deer population, and beef up the border, all because we can't stop screwing. I didn't say which border, so that makes you racist if you're thinking Mexico. All but the pandas, we actually have to show them panda porn to try to get them in to mate. This is more than just erratic mating habits. They're openly mocking us. I witnessed it firsthand. I went to the, some zoologist to a panda bear habitat and had the rare privilege to observe two pandas mating. The male panda mounted the female panda from behind and after about 10 minutes he looked up, made a grimacing face, pulled out, came on her back. Later in the day I witnessed the same panda being <laughs> blown while he wiped his ass with the American flag. We should breed them with dogs. Dogs never stop screwing. We need to invent the pan dog. I also don't like that we can only lease them from China. They won't give them to us. They'll only let us borrow them. Why are they so stingy with their bears? Not only do they eventually want them back, they come with a list of sanctioned names, and Todd's not on the list. We have to give them names like Ling Ling and Ching Ching. 
F China. If we gave them a buffalo and named it Pan Pan, we wouldn't give a shit. We get their panda and we get have to name it Mitsuk or some other stupid Chinese name. Let's give China a bald eagle and force them to name it Gary. Llamas. My only problem with llamas is I don't know if we can ride them or not. Bulls. I envy them. Not because of their power or strength, but their psych. Let's face it, we're all miserable because we got dumped by our prom date on our little league coach bench or our little league coach benched us or our folks don't pay enough attention to us when we're growing up. We just can't get over shitty past. Bulls don't cling to their past. They're locked up in the stall and there's a guy on top of them tugging a rope that's wrapped around their balls. They're thinking to themselves, when that guy opens the gate, I'm going to buck his a this asshole off me. And once that 140 pound shit kicker hits the ground, he's gonna fill 2,000 pounds of bullhorn going right through his sternum. Then the bell sounds and the gate opens and for eight seconds all the bull can think about is, I'm going to kill this mother effer for humiliating me. Once I get this guy on the ground, he's dead. And then he bucks him off, sees him lying on the ground helpless in front of him and thinks, eh, no, I'm not going to kill you for what you put me through. He lowers his head and prepares to finish him off. <laughs> but at the last second, a guy wearing Wrangler shants rainbow suspenders and clown makeup jumps in front of him and the bull thinks, huh, maybe I should kill this guy instead. In a split second, all is forgiven and the bull's entire focus is on killing a guy whose only crime was stealing Robin Williams' suspenders. Well, we're all pushing our, <laughs> punishing ourselves for our past. The self-actualized bull looks toward the future. A quick tangent on rodeo clowns. Is there a more dangerous job that doesn't translate into an ounce of poontang? Chicks love firemen and there's danger involved, but not every day. With rodeo clowning, every day your job is to dress up like you're a Telemundo skit and jump in front of a pissed off one ton murder machine. But at the end of the night, you go home alone to a trailer and remove the makeup with your own tears. Oh man, this is great. Next week, we're going to be reading about the bathroom do's and don'ts. And speaking of bathrooms, I'm going to have to go and uh, drop off a deuce myself, just like the birds. Too bad we can't fly over our crappy neighbors because we got some stupid ones that I'd really like to drop a load on. Anyway, see you next week. More reading from the Book of Corolla. Mm -hmm.